Hi, I'm Graham Glick, Assistant Provost and Executive Director for Teaching, Learning Plus Technology at Stony Brook University, and this is Innovations in Education. In our show, we feature faculty and staff using innovative approaches and best practices to teaching and applications of educational technology that have had a positive effect on student learning. In this show, I'm joined by Gary Haleda, Associate Professor in Material Science and Engineering, and we will be discussing using e-portfolios to assess student learning. Gary, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me here. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about the courses that you teach? Uh, I teach courses. Uh, I teach an introductory course in engineering science. Uh, I teach about uh, learning from engineering disasters. And I actually teach a course in how to teach for graduate students. Mm. And uh, I've taught uh, a number of courses in design and other areas in engineering. Okay, and these are face-to-face -face classes with how many students? It varies. Uh, some, of the, some of the classes have, uh, actually I teach a course in introduction to nanotechnology studies that has about 30 students and the course in learning from engineering disaster has uh, or had about 122 students last semester. Okay. Now the engineering school has been one of our greatest adopters of e-portfolios. Can you tell us what an e-portfolio is and why it's important for you to use with the students? Well I see it as a way to um, well first of all allow the students to uh, put their assignments together. It also helps the faculty member, I believe, assemble the course material in such a way that it makes sense to both themselves and the student and delivers the learning objectives that they want to have. And it allows the uh, students to submit their material in an online format, even in a face-to-face -face setting, and also amend that material with personal reflections, uh, provide uh, additional material about themselves and show how they can link the material together in the course. Okay. You said personal reflections. Why is personal reflection on learning important? Well, it's something I'm learning more about, actually, as this goes along. But I think that personal reflections are important because it shows how a student feels that the work is important to them. Mm -hmm. What they feel or how they feel the work has an impact on their lives or how it connects to things in their lives. Okay, have you seen it impact how well they learn? And that as well. It also talks about, uh, I, I think these personal reflections also show how the students incorporate the material, and that's really the bottom line for learning. Okay. So in a traditional course, you might assign a student to write a paper about a topic. Mm -hmm. What's different in this approach? You're, you're having them do this paper, but they're putting it into a, a repository. Right, and it also, it, well, first of all, I, this is my opinion of how, of how it best works. It allows the student to connect that work to other work they've done in the course. Mm -hmm. and a lot of times assignments are sort of standalone things. They'll hand in a homework assignment or they'll uh, write a report or do something, create a presentation and forget about it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just added to the stack of things for the class and then they just wait for a grade to come back and they hope they pass. Uh, with, uh, by, with, with the portfolio format as well as adding personal reflections and all these other things. Uh, it gives the students a chance to see how their work uh, connects to the overall course learning objectives and um, also shows them why what they're being assigned is actually important. Uh, a lot of times I think students don't understand the importance of a certain assignment or a report and, um, and I think the portfolios give us another way to approach that, another way to, to show them how important it is by allowing them to connect. So do you actually assign them a task of reflecting on various pieces of work or is that just something that they sort of casually are expected to do? I think they do it already. Uh, I assign it as part of the electronic portfolio and I'm starting to see some of the feedback coming back now. I have to say this is the first semester I've used electronic portfolios so I'm a little bit new to it. Mm -hmm. But I think that the, um, I, think, I think the students are starting to see the value in it. I think they're starting to return with these reflections that are either assigned or they just naturally do. I mean, I think they want to give information back and they want to talk about the assignments. I've talked to students for a long time in terms of assessing our programs. And I like to hear back from the students about 
how they feel the course is and the entire program is important to them. That's, that's very important to me as a program designer, as a course designer. I want to know from them what they see and what they feel about it. So not only are they in these reflections thinking about the impact personally, but they're reflecting back to you what they did and didn't like about the assignment and challenges and so on. Right. They, they, they're, they're talking about the assignment. They're talking about whether it improved their knowledge in some way. I, I think it empowers mm -hmm. the students to be able to give a reflection. Mm -hmm. uh, it means that they are contributing more than just a, a very narrow uh, very narrow highway between themselves and the professor where it's an assignment that's handed out and brought back in and on that one lane road you know right. one way goes one way and comes back the other way uh, in this case there's more of an interchange it broadens the highway mm -hmm. allows the professor to connect to the students the students to connect to the course and what and about student to student do students read each other's reflections I haven't done that yet but that's but that's certainly possible mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to see how I, I how I can best use that to deliver my course objectives I'm not sure yet how it'll work, but it's something I want to try. So what, what type of information is in this portfolio? Obviously, we've talked about assignments, papers. Mm -hmm. What else would be in there? Assignments, papers, presentations. I like to see what the students do with an assignment. Uh, I've just, again, just started using it this semester. And I already see that students are starting to add multimedia content to, mm -hmm. their, to their responses. I asked them, for example, to talk about um, a company that a graduate of our program currently works for. They had to first of all find out what companies graduates of our engineering program work for and these are freshman students so this is for the freshman course. So they have to uh, first of all find out about things and then when they talk about the company they don't just come back with a little paragraph about it from the company's website. They actually will import video, they'll um, you know have their personal comments on there so it becomes it becomes much more to them. I think it's it reflects the way students brains work. Uh, and how they, how they use that information to expand their learning. Now, since this is a relatively new implementation for you, and what have, do you mean the challenges as a first-time instructor implementing ePortfolios? I think it's trying to find out where the value of it lies. Um, it, it's, it's an ex it, it gives you an expanded learning capability for a course, mm -hmm. and, but every instructor, I think, has to figure out what that expanded learning means to them and means to their course. So I think that it's, it, I, I think the challenge right now is seeing how it's more than just a method for collecting homework assignments and reports. You know, what else can you do with it? What do these reflections mean? I had no idea what the reflections meant before I started doing this. So how can that actually add to learning? And that's something I'm learning about. It's adding to my learning. Mm -hmm. Have you changed how you evaluate the students? Do you give less, fewer quizzes and expect more no, contribution? I haven't changed it too much because I guess it's already been Right now, the portfolios reflect the way my brain works as well, how I've set it up. So it's still basically my evaluation format. I think something I'm going to be looking at as time goes on is how to interrogate these portfolios to assess our program. And that's something that's very important to me. Okay. I, so jumping right off that, assessing your program leads obviously to accreditation. How, how do you think these would help with the accreditation process? I think that's, that's going to be maybe the most interesting uh, part of this for me, I'm very involved in the uh, ABET, which is the associate, uh, the um, Accreditation Board for Engineering and Technology, and all our engineering programs here are accredited by ABET, but it's a process you go through every six years mm -hmm. uh, at least, and we're going to be going into accreditation uh, review next year, 2011, and to me, I see these portfolios as a way to find out about things that are hard to evaluate. Some of the um, outcomes that ABET deems important for engineering programs are things such as lifelong learning, um, an understanding of ethics as it applies to engineering, an understanding of uh, problem solving, uh, contemporary issues and global issues. How does that all figure into a student's engineering education? And these portfolios will allow me to assess a student's understanding of that a little bit better because when they reflect on, for example, the story of an engineer or a company, mm -hmm. I can see a little bit better how they think about the company in terms of ethics or how they think about the engineer in terms of how they've kept up their education over time. And uh, it'll allow me to demonstrate to ABET and demonstrate to ourselves that our students are learning these important uh, skills. So will the accreditation team actually look at the e-folios for students? 
I think uh, what we're, what we're doing two things right now with the electronic portfolios in terms of accreditation. We'll have the student portfolios available and we'll maybe show some of them if they're interested. The accreditation team is only here for a short time. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the other way we're using it is to have a portfolio for the whole program where we contribute information <laughs> for each of the uh, learning outcomes for our program, each of the student outcomes into a master portfolio. And then that portfolio will be available to them long before they arrive here uh -huh. for their accreditation. So they'll see what we think we're doing to satisfy our 11 uh, student outcomes for the program. So not only are the students reflecting on their own learning, but the faculty in the program are reflecting on the quality of their own program as part of, by, through e-folios. And absolutely, and that's an incredibly important part mm -hmm. of the process of accreditation. Yeah. Okay. Now you mentioned lifelong learning. Mm -hmm. uh, how, obviously these e-folios are not just for a course. They belong to the student and they mm -hmm. can put content in over multiple courses through their whole academic career and beyond. So how do you see these empowering lifelong learning? Well, students understand lifelong learning when they understand how a course or their knowledge doesn't end at the end of a course. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have the opportunity to see how all, the, first of all, how all the courses connect over time and how it adds up to something that's greater than the sum of the parts. Uh, they may take courses in thermodynamics and math and physics and engineering and all these different areas. How do these things, when put together, allow them to become uh, a professional engineer? How does it allow them to become a contributing member of society? <laughs> how does it allow them to get a great job someday and or has it allowed them to get into a good graduate school they're going to see how all these parts come together and help them to do that by using the portfolios but beyond that they can hopefully continue these portfolios after they leave and we can continue to communicate with the students through the portfolio mm -hmm. um, and I'm hoping that the uh, alumni of our program continue to communicate to our current undergraduates because that kind of peer-to-peer -peer interaction is extremely important if you want to show the importance or the value of your educational program. Mm -hmm. Now, in your course, you're asking them to reflect on how multiple topics interrelate. Are there any plans within the college to ask them to reflect on how multiple courses interrelate? Because that wouldn't be the purview of a single instructor. Right. I think that's <laughs> going to be um, up to individual program directors uh, for undergraduate programs, individual program chairs. We'll have to see what happens. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of interesting things being done uh, I'm sh at other places, and I, I have to probably do a little more research on how they're using it. But I know that um, as I think about ways to uh, evaluate the, the things that are hard to evaluate, I know I'm going to look at what other people are doing and try to apply that here. Gary, thank you for being on the show today. Thank you. If you have any questions for Gary, you can post them on the TLT website at tlt.stonybrook.edu or on our Facebook site. Just search for Innovations in Education. I hope you join me for the next interesting episode of Innovations in Education.